praise God, my brothers and sisters. We're thankful this morning that God has allowed us to be able to come together once again and bless his holy name. Wherever you may be this morning, if you would just stand and join in with us in our time of prayer, a time of going before the Lord and just thanking God for being so good to us. Eternal God, we come now, we thank you this morning. We come thanking you for this beautiful Sunday morning. We thank you, God, for your kindness, your grace, and your mercy. We ask now in the name of Jesus that you would just have your way in this place. We thank you, God, for watching over us all last week, keeping us from hurt, harm, and danger. We thank you, God, for the men and women of God that have shared in ministry and have been supportive of the work and the assignment. I pray now for a fresh anointing for this day as we go forth, God. I pray, God, for you men that will minister through song that you shall use them mightily. Pray, God, for you preacher that you will endow him with a fresh anointing. We ask now that you would bless your people, even those who are shared and viewing at home, and those in their places of employment, and even those that are here in the sanctuary this morning. We thank you for being so good. Bless now and have your way in this place. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Come on, let's put our blessed hands together and give the Lord a hand of praise. As our men come forth at this hour, we prepare to support them as they minister at this time.
somebody praise him. You're right. worthy, Father God, to be praised. Yes, Lord. You're worthy of all praise, glory, and honor, Father God. Thank you, Lord. But you alone are worthy, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Let us stand to our feet and worship him and praise him. Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. He's deserving of all the honor. Hallelujah.
want to take a moment and thank God for the people of God who have been sharing our time of Bible study on Tuesday evenings. And we invite you this Tuesday again to join in and tune in to our conference calls. Uh, we'll make sure that you receive the information again before you leave today through our app. We want you to join in on Tuesday evenings at 730 as we continue to share the 23rd Psalms. Last two weeks, we've shared in the perfect guidance and the perfect reason. We shared in the perfect guidance of, of knowing that uh, the righteousness, and then secondly, for the perfect reason in Jesus' name. This Tuesday night, we will share in the perfect calmness. Uh, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, perfect calmness, knowing that God will be with me. Join in at 7.30 this Tuesday as we share the word of God to hear what the Lord has to say to us as a church family. Let's keep in mind this coming Saturday is the first Saturday in the month of May. May 1st, we will be here between the hours of 10 a.m. to 12.15 to receive your communion. Please come by on Saturday between the time of 10 a.m. to 12.15 our deaconess, deacons will be here for the distribution of communion. And if it's a time that you want to drop off your offering, you can do so as well. But we come and we share receiving our communion and then we join together. If you're physically coming into the sanctuary, we're here on the first Sunday at 8 a.m. to partake and share the Lord's Supper together. And then for those who are at home, you will join in with us during that time and share the Lord's Supper as well on next Sunday. God is blessing us. God has smiled upon us as a church family, and great things are happening within our ministry. And as we prepare for the month of July for our church anniversary, we want to do it in the spirit of joy and in the spirit of celebration. We have an announcement that as it relates to our ads, let's receive an amen, Sister Bivens, as she comes forth to share now in the announcement of our ads at this time, Sister Lambert and Sister Bivens will come forth at this time, amen, to share and give you some insight and input. And I pray that everyone is putting it into their hearts. We did our pictures two weeks ago, and we're preparing now to increase and enhance as we go forth with our ads. So let's listen to our announcement as we share for a moment. Good morning, New Generation. Good morning. Can we just take a moment to give God some praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We stand on behalf of our great pastor, the yeah. Reverend Ranzer yeah. Allen Thomas, yeah. and our first lady, yeah. Reverend Rhonda Michelle Thomas, and the New Generation family. We've come to remind everybody that this year is our 25th anniversary, yeah. our church can we just give God some praise, hallelujah, for he alone is worthy, hallelujah. And we're going to do a lot of things, a lot of things just to memorialize this year because it's our birthday again, hallelujah, in July. And on the fourth Sunday in July, we're going to just celebrate. But one of the ways that we will celebrate is with a souvenir book. Can we put our hands together? And give God some praise. Yeah. We've taken pictures of ministries, and now we're asking everyone else to join in and just purchase an ad. The, the rates for the ad are very minute. <laughs> if you would look, the full page ad is $250. The half page ad is $175. The quarter page is $125, and then the business card is only $50. Hallelujah. Can we give God some praise? <laughs> By you purchasing an ad, you will not only bless new generation, but you'll also bless our future. We'll be able to reference back and look back over the years of what we have been through from our first location till today, from who we are today, and we just give God some praise because we've made it, we've made it, and we've made it. Hallelujah. There's 
nobody like our God, hallelujah. There's nobody, hallelujah. So on this Saturday, we, re we just want to also remind our, our leaders, when you come in for your offering, please complete a page. The, the ministry pages don't cost anything. However, we ask that every leader come and fill out a page to congratulate the church, congratulate our pastor and our first lady for a job well done. Hallelujah. Can we once again, again give God some praise? Blessings to everyone. Amen. Thank you, leaders, for sharing. So again, as stated, look forward to you being here on Saturday and all leaders of ministries, as stated, there's going to be a form for you to complete with your words of appreciation, your words of congratulation to the ministry and to the pastors on this coming Saturday so that it can fall in line with the picture of your ministry in the booklet. We're preparing now for the Word of God. Minister Leonard Mike is coming forward with the Word of God today. I want you to prepare to support him and pray with him that God will use him in his own special way. As our men will come and minister and follow the ministry of the men, I want you to stand even in your homes as we pay reverence for leadership coming to the pulpit and for those in the sanctuary as we share in hearing a word from the Lord. Amen. Let's prepare at this time. Men of God, come on, men. Let's give them a hand as they come in. Thank you. Amen. Yeah, hallelujah. 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 Lord God. Uh, we just want yes, to take Lord. time out to thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God for whatever thank it is. You, today. you have in oh, mind. God. Father God, we just hallelujah. realize today, Lord God, yes. that there are so many benefits to saying yes to the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Father God, I decided long ago. I put away my running shoes and start running from God. Amen. Lord, whatever you call me to do. Lord, if you want me to sweep, I'll sweep. Lord, if you want me to sing, I'll sing. Lord, if you want me to pray, if you want me to feed the homeless. Lord, if you want me to visit the sick. Lord, God, I made up my mind, I will say yes. Whatever you want me to do. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I'll say yes, Lord, yes. To your will and to your way, I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey, when your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree, and my answer will be yes.
they was condemned for 38 years in the wilderness. All right. They wandered until their faithless generation had died off. Yeah. Watch this. 38 years later, they arrived back to the Jordan River. Yes, sir. Moses speaks to them to prepare them to enter Canaan. As he does, he let them know that they was about to face some giants on the other side of Jordan. What's the point? The point is Israel fled from those same giants 38 years before. Mm -hmm. When their children had came back, 30 years, 38 years later, the giants were still there to face. This morning, I would like to speak to each and every one of you, including myself. Face your giant. Because somehow or another, you're going to have to deal with it. How do I know? Because we all have giants. We all have to face something major in our life. We all have a giant to face. Perhaps your giant may not be my giant. My giant may not be your giant. But we all have a giant. We all have to face something big in our life. I don't care what it is. I don't care how you name it. I don't care how you look at it. I don't care what you think of. A giant is a giant. If you can't defeat it, amen, that's a giant. Amen. amen, but God, I don't know about you, but he created all of us to be winners. Yes. He created all of us to be victorious. Yes. God don't want none of us to lose. God don't want none of us to lose. He created us to win. Yes. He created us to hold up the victory banner. Yes. He created us to do the will of the Lord. Amen. But he created us to do it with his help. Yeah. Amen. We can't do it by ourselves. My God. I have a few of my own. That's giants, that is. The bottom line to this that you may not want to face a giant. You may not want to, to run. You may want to run from your fear, your giant and in fear. But you got to face it. David, as a young man, is filled with faith. Uh, yeah. He's filled with vigor. Uh -huh. He's filled with energy. Yes, yes, yes. You know how it is when you're young. Amen. Yeah. You, you just sometimes you're just so young that you, you think you can take on everything. Uh -huh. That's why you need the old and you need the young. Uh -huh. Amen. You need the old, amen, because they have wisdom. Amen. You need the young because they have strength, vigor, and fiber. So, so you two can't go without yes, sir. each other. You need them both. Uh -huh. David was a young man. He was not afraid to do battles. David was used to battles. David was accustomed to battles. David fought battles, many battles, and he held many victories. As we begin to dive into the text, we'll see that it's three points that I want to bring home this short while that I'm up. All right. The three points that I want to bring is, the first point is, you have to exhibit the right motives. Uh -huh. All right. Uh -huh. The second point is, you have to embrace the right methods. Yes, yes. And then the third and final point is, you, you have to expect the right mirror. Amen. So you have to exhibit the right motives. Yeah. If you want to be a giant killer, you have to have the right, embrace the right methods if you want to be a giant killer. And thirdly, if you want to be a giant killer, you have to expect the right mirror. Yeah, boy. Thank you. If you want to Defeat your giant, 
this morning. You have to exhibit the right motive. And how you do that? David's father, Jesse, has sent David to bring some supplies yeah. to his three brothers that was on Saul's army fighting on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. When David had arrived to the battlefield, Saul and the armies of Israel was covering them with fear because they had talked their threats by the big giant called Goliath. My God. It is seen that Israel and the Philistines was carrying out ages of old rituals of each army that would produce a champion. Come on now. These champions would fight to death and the, the side that won the battle would claim the victory over the enemy. And the loser of the battle will become the servant of the victor. The, champ the champion of the Philistines was no ordinary soldier. In fact, this soldier was quite impressive. My God. This soldier stood nine feet tall. Nine feet inches, nine inches. Nine feet tall, nine inches. Mm -hmm. He wore about 175 pounds. Now that's tall, but on the other hand, that's light. <laughs> that's big, that's tall. But on one hand, that's, that's light to be that tall. Also, he had a spear that was about 32 pounds in weight. This monster covered in brass from head to toe. So I guess his whole outfit brought a threat to each and every one of you that was out there fighting. For 40 mornings and evenings, the giant had taunted the armies of Israel and had begun to challenge them to send out the man that would do battle with him. For 40 mornings and evenings, the Israelites had heard and challenged and, and, and retreated to their tents in fear. The Philistines has sent out a challenge. Who wants to come and fight? But those who was in the army didn't want to go out and face this giant because of his tall stature, because of how wide he was, and because of what he carried. They didn't want to go out and fight. So they guess what? They resorted back to their tents. In other words, they were scared. Yeah. However, this day would be different. The Goliath and his challenge had seen and heard by a young man by the name of David. Well, well. David faith in his confidence in the Lord rises to the challenge and he offered to go out and fight against the giant. Yes. When David had spoke of killing the giant, his motive was questioned. And just think about it, his motives was questioned by the ones that was in his camp. His motives was questioned by the ones who should have been on his side. Look at me, they said, they say, some of you may have thought that David was motivated by a financial reward. Some of you have, 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 have thought that, that, that I need going to fight against the giant, they're going to pay me well. Maybe you thought that's my motive, but David told him that's not my motive. No, no. That's, that's, not, that's not why I want to fight against this giant. His brothers speak it out in jealousy. No. Be careful of your family members. No, no. Huh? They tried to accuse David of promoting himself. No, no. Who do you think he is? No, no. Yeah. We can't do it. No. We tried to do it. No. I'm scared. I'm in my tent. Yeah, yeah. Who do you think you are? You young, you short, you ruddy. Who do you think you are? You, who do you think you are? You want to go up and fight against him? His own brothers. Mm -hmm. Amen. I don't know about you, but if my brother, amen, said that let's go fight, I, I mean, at least I got somebody in my corner. Two against one, huh? so we, we, we can get the job done two against one. Yeah. Amen. But, but why would your own brother say, uh, who do you think you are? What, 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 are you, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to do? Promote yourself? And then you got his other brothers that David had been, knew that David had been anointed uh -huh, uh -huh. by Samuel. 
And they thought that he was trying to advance his name in the kingdom. They thought David was trying to take over the church. They thought David was trying to be the leader of, 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 of Israel. But, 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 but that's not the case. David said that that's not what I'm about. I'm used to fighting. I have no problems with fighting other me. I, I have no problems going up against this giant. I, I'm used to this giant. I'm used to a bear. I'm used to a lion. I'm used to each and every one. I'm used to this. This ain't nothing to me. Amen. I'm convinced that David Hart was motivated by two things. I don't think it was money, nor was it fame and power. I think he was motivated by two things. Here's the two things I think he was motivated. I think he was motivated, Sister Jack, I think he was motivated to glory and God. Yeah. God. That's what I think he was motivated by. He was motivated to glorify God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think he was, he was motivated by his role as a newly appointed king. Yeah. Yes, sir. It's something about when you take over leadership that everything, uh, the book stops with you, amen. Everything stops with you. Everything starts with you. That's the leader. Uh -huh. New generation can't go nowhere without Pastor Thomas. Well, well. He's the leader. Amen. The buck stops with him. Amen. amen. That's why us as parishioners, now we got to help advance the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 Our job is not to take over the kingdom. Our God is to help advance the kingdom. Amen. To uplift the kingdom. Amen. amen. That God will get the glory. Amen. Just as David had protected his sheep, from the attacks of the lion and the bear, he was protecting Israel from the attack of, uh, of the lion. Yes, That's the reason why David wanted to go against this giant because he wanted to protect Israel. Yes, sir. Uh, he didn't want Israel to be holding up the victory. They were only holding up the victory to let them know that, no, 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 we're not going to do that. We're gonna, I'm going to fight against you as this Philistine. When you see these giants facing in your own life, ask yourself the question, why do I want this giant defeated? What is my motive for wanting this giant dead? What is this motive of why, why I won't cast the dead? What is your motive for why I want to get out of poverty? What's your motive for wanting to be set free? Uh, what what is your motive? Huh? Uh, I, I'll tell you some of the things. Uh, uh, some, 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 some of your motive, your, 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 your motive should be to desire to give God the glory. Yes, that should be your motive. That should be one of the reasons why you want to be, be debt free. So you can, if you're debt free, you can give more freely to the church. You don't have to give grudgingly. When you get free, you can help advance the kingdom of God. Pastor said he needs a thousand dollars. You should be one of the first. Oh, Amen. Uh, to, to say, I got a thousand. There you go, Pastor. What you need? Let's do it. That's why you should be motivated to want to be, 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 be financially free. Yeah. You don't want to be have no nothing bought you holding you down. Amen. It's amazing when you're financially free, the things that you can do. Amen, 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 amen. You get to the point where you're looking for, I don't know about you, for, for the next 30 days where your bills at. Amen. What is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? I thought they were coming. At one point, you didn't have no money. You, every time you turn around, 30 days came quick. Now I'm to the point, I'm looking like, where you at? Oh, where you at? 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 GMAC, where are you? Amen. Financial freedom. Amen. But that's, but that can't do some setback. That came back through some heartaches and some pain. Yeah. Amen. That can't do some overdraft attempts. Yeah. That came back through some setback. That was a giant back then. Yeah. Amen. To God be the glory Amen. for all that He's doing in our lives. Yeah. You want to be a, 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 a desire to give God the glory and desire for God's prayer to be fulfilled in your life. Yeah. Hmm? That's in Romans 8, 28. I, I have scripture, but I know we on the time strain. I don't want Jackie putting that sign up there and giving me no time telling me to cut it. So I got to kind of skim through this. Amen. Bear with me. Amen. 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 So here it is. Here it is. Here it is. It is a part of God's plan for you to face the giant. The giant would not be there. Huh? It may be a part of God's plan for you to defeat your giant. It also may be a part of God's plan for you to live 
with your giant. Yes. But are you willing to accept this plan well, regardless of what it is? Well, I will admit to you this morning that one of the primary reasons God uses David to defeat the giant was because David had the right motives. Yeah. He was one of that giant, David. Yeah, yeah. And a friend of one of the reasons of you and I do not want to see our giants fall. fall. It's like we want them to, to be because they often pray for operating from the wrong motives. Mm -hmm. That's point number one. You have to exhibit the right motives. Yeah. Point number two, you have to embrace the right method. My God. Well. When God planned us to kill the giant, he reached King Saul's ears. Mm -hmm. He had joined the course of the naysayers, telling David he cannot do the job. These group of chilliness was begin to tell David, you can't do it. Then hearing David was determined to the battle that Saul tried to suit David up. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Well, with his own arm. Yeah, yeah. David, however, rejected Saul's only because he had not proven it. Yeah. Well, come on. Now that's one thing to get somebody advice. That's one thing. It's one thing to get somebody take on something. Yeah, yeah. It's one thing to listen to somebody who have been through what you're going through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one thing. Right. But the next thing is you have to be able to balance it. Yeah. And to take it for what it's worth. You you, you can't use what what you use. I, I can't use what you use. Yeah, yeah. Mm hmm David was determined that he would not go into battle with these things that had already worked for him in the past. David was determined to, to go to battle and, and to do battle in what he was used to. He was determined to go and do battle to what he was used to doing battle with. I'm not used to fighting with a helmet on. I'm not used to fighting with a sword. I'm not used to fighting with a shield. That's too much stuff on you. That's too much. That's too much weight on me. I need to be loose. If you need it, if you notice a boxer, all he has is a pair of mitts and he has on his trunks and his boots. He has to be light. If you look at a track runner, the only thing they have is shorts, cleats, and a shirt, skin tight. And now some of y'all be wondering, why they got to wear so, so, so skin tight? They need to be loose. They need to be free. They need to be light. Yeah. Amen. To run the race. Yeah. And David here said that I, 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 I appreciate it, but I, I can't use what you use. No, no, no. I, I'm not used to, to, to fighting with, with, with a helmet on. I'm not used to having on a shield and, a, and, and, some, and some breastplate. I'm not used to having on all that. I'm not used to that. I'm not, I'm not going to fight with that. Yeah. So David knew that God was greater than any giant. Yeah. He also knew that God had a plan for his life. Yeah. He knew that God's plan did not include for him dying at the hand of Goliath. Yeah. So when David had went out to fight, he only took those things that, he, that worked for him in the past. So he took, watch this, he took his staff, yeah. his sling, yeah. and he took his stones. Right. He took his staff, his sling, and his stones. Don't miss the essence. Yeah. Yeah. He took his staff, his sling, and his stones. And, and when he took that, his sling, and he also, he took the sovereignty of God. Right. That was the main point in yeah. battle. He took the sovereignty of God with him out of the battle. Yeah. He didn't leave God out of it. He took God with him. Yeah. And why did David take those five stones? Uh, uh, I know some of you asked that question. Why, why would he take five stones? I don't know why he took five stones, but let me use my sanctified 
imagination. Let me use what some of the other theologians have said. Some of them said, well, he took his own fire soul because one thing about it, he only needed one. Yeah, yeah. But he took five. Uh -huh. And here's a, some of the, some of the, uh, what I uh, uh, gathered, he said, he took five because he knew by five there was a number of grace in the Bible. David knew that grace would defeat the Goliath, so he needed grace in order to fight yeah. this giant. That's good. David didn't doubt and didn't know nothing about grace, a, 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 a Bible analogy, but he knew five was the number of grace. Goliath, yeah. some theologians said that he took five because they say Goliath had uh, four other sons. And I don't know about you, but huh, sometimes we, we a fight that's not always fought first. Man. Huh, a fight not always fought fair. Amen. Amen. So, so David was prepared that even if he bring his, his sons with him, I got some for them too. So that's a lesson learned to you. When you fight, amen, don't, don't fight fair with Satan. Don't, don't, don't fight fair because he's not going to fight fair. He's going to always try to hit you below the belt. He's going to always try to destroy you. That's his whole job. He, his whole job is to try to destroy you, try to kill you. So you can't fight fair with him. Five for grace. For, for the son, uh, and the most likely reason David wanted to be sure that he finished the job. Uh, yeah. He knew that he might miss. Yeah. Uh, you got to take that into account. Uh, he also knew that this giant not, might not fall on the first hit. Amen. So he wanted to be sure that he was ready to complete the assignment. By this way, our giants of mine uh, don't always go down on the first swing. COVID-19 didn't go down no. on the first prayer. No. Huh? Many people are praying, but it's, 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 it's not going down on the first prayer. So we can't just stop praying. We got to continue to pray. Oh, yeah. Cancer not going down on the first prayer. No. We got to continue to pray. AIDS not going down on one prayer. No. We got to continue to pray. Amen. Amen. Health issues, setbacks, and, and, and set, setbacks are not going down on the first prayer. No. We got to continue yeah. to pray. Your giants and mine don't always go down on the first swing. No. But if you go into battle fully equipped, in the power of God, uh -huh. you would keep swinging your giant will eventually fall. Yeah. You could try to try any other method. Uh -huh. You could try to try any other method to defeat the giant in your life. Uh -huh. Well, sir. you can attend the latest seminar. Uh -huh. You can go to the latest women's conference. Yeah. You can go to the latest men's conference. Yeah, yeah. You can read your Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You can pray three times a day. Yeah. Uh, you, can, you can pray the prayer of Jabez. Uh -huh. You can strive to be a perfect driven church. Uh -huh. You can strive to have a perfect driven life. But when it's all said and done, a giant killing get it it's done real simple. Mm -hmm. It's done real simple. It comes down to one simple basic truth. Yes, sir. The just should live by faith. Yeah. That's the one simple truth in order to kill your giant. That's the one simple truth that you got to have. The just shall live by faith. Uh -huh. If you want to see your giant in your life laying flat, dead, know that God is greater 
than your giant. The giant who worked then is the same that will still work right now. You don't need new methods to try to defeat your giant. Try and use the weapons of prayer and faith. The word of God is still true. That you, you can still get the job done today by using prayer and faith. Communicate with the headquarters about your giant. Prayer is the believer's greatest secret weapon. Communication has always been an issue on the battlefield. It's hard to communicate out there on the battlefield. So prayer can communicate with one another on the battlefield. Yes, Problems have been solved on the spiritual battlefield, but the, the saints of God can be constantly in contact through the growing of grace through prayer. Amen. Assault your giant with the word of God. This is the Savior's method. Yeah, yeah. Attack your giant in faith. God always give you the victory. Yeah, thank you. He will either give you the victory over what you face, or he will give you the victory in what you face. Yeah. Somehow or another, he's going to give you the victory. Yeah, thank you. God did not save you to let you fall at the hand of the giant. God did not place you in, in God did not place you in our lives to grow us in the Lord. They are the original breakfast of champions. One word he said in this book, giants are like bumps that climbs on. So if you want to defeat your giant, you have to Exhibit the right motives. Well. Secondly, you have to embrace the right method. Yeah. And thirdly, you have to expect the right miracles. Yeah. David had walked down directly into an impossible situation. Yeah. He was dialing by some. He was ridiculed by the giant. Yet his faith allowed David to accomplish everything that fear had denied Saul of. There's a contrast between being speechless of the giant and David. David declared the victory and the glory before the battle had even been fought. Yeah. And that's the lesson learned to each and every one of us that we have to speak those things that as they are as was as they was. Yeah. We have to we have to speak it in advance. We have to 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 speak victory in advance. Even when whatever we fix, we have to speak it and let them know that you too will die. Yeah. You will not have the victory. Yeah. This is the essence of faith. Yes. It allows you to give your victory speech before you even go to battle. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I've had so many battles in my life. Yeah. I had so many battles I had to face. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I'm glad this morning that I had many battles to face. I had many ups and I had many downs. But that did not face me from going face to face with my giant. Your giant may not be my giant. My giant may not be your giant. But we all have a giant. We all have the giant that we need to feel. But I'm reminded that a giant was faced in our father's life. Yeah. He didn't face that giant. He didn't.
pull up his tent and run back. He dealt with his giant head on. Yeah. And his giant was the death of the cross. Yeah. They took him to the cross and they nailed his hand to the cross. Yeah. They took him to the cross and they nailed his feet to the cross. Yeah. They pierced him in his side and out came blood and water. Yeah. I don't know about you, but he faced his giant. Yeah. He didn't run from his giant, he hit it head on. And he stood there, he took every ounce of sin, he took every pound, every strike that was beating over his body. But he did not say a moaning word. Our same giant took that on the cross. And they took our God and they put him in the bar or two. But on the third day he got up with all power in his hand. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that our Savior, he was a he taught us the lesson of how to be a giant killer. He taught us how to deal with our giants. And I'm going to teach each and every one of you how to deal with your giant. You first have to face your giant head on. You can't be soft compared to your giant. You have to be, be the head on. You got to speak the word of God to your giant. You have to tell your giant you would not have the victory. You would not have the victory. But our giant, amen, he will be defeated. How to be a giant killer to God. you're at right now as we just began to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and knowing that whatever demonic force, whatever attack of the enemy may be trying to come upon you and your family minister just shared with us that we can defeat that giant there are some giants that many of us are facing in our lives right now there's a giant of sickness. But how many of us know this morning that God is a healer? There are some men and women in this room that if they could give their testimony, they would be able to testify that they know that God is a healer. And in this room, in these homes right now, I need you to just begin to think about the giants of your life and how God has given you the victory could have been a giant of financial debt and God brought you over. Could have been a family issue and the enemy was attacking your marriage, attacking your sons and your daughters, but you took it to the Lord in prayer. Not only did you pray, but you spent time fasting and believing that God would bring them through. There are some witnesses this morning that know that God can mend a broken family. That God can bring sons and daughters back into the family of faith. And so wherever we're at this morning in our homes or even in your place of employment, I need you to just begin to worship Him. I need you to just begin to give God some glory. I need you to just begin to think about how good God has been to you this morning and just began to bless his holy name. There's worship in this room right now. There's some men and women of God. Not only David teaches us this valuable lesson that the preacher preached about, David teaches us worship. And I'm thankful this morning that some of us got our breakthroughs when we began to worship God. It was one thing to praise him. But it's another thing to worship Him. Come on, in this room, I need you to just begin to let God know how much you love Him. Thank you, Lord. How much you adore Him. How much you magnify His name. Oh, God, this morning we began to bless your name. Oh, God, that there's a spirit of victory resting in this room this morning. And God, we thank you right now. There's some men of God and women of God in this room right now, God, that stand in the need of a breakthrough. There's somebody that needs healing this morning. And oh God, we thank you that you are a healer. 
And so we began to exalt your name right now. Thanking you like David that you are a healer. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Spirit of the living God, continue to have your way in this place. Spirit of the living God, we magnify you. Spirit of the living God, we adore you in this place. God, we thank you for being so good to us. We thank you for being our Jehovah Jireh. There are some mothers and grandmothers in this room today, in their homes, God, that know that they would not have made it without you. And so, God, we bless your name right now. We not only bless your name for being a healer this morning, but, oh, God, but we thank you for being a provider this morning. We thank you for providing and meeting all of our needs. And so, God, we exhort you in this we adore you in this place this morning. We magnify your name today, God. We thank you for making a way for us this morning. We bless your name right now, God. Thank God. There's some students, there's some sons and daughters and families this morning that are getting ready to go into an exam this week. They're going into a continuation of testing this week. And God, they need you. They need you. They need you. They studied. They made proper preparation. But God, they need a breakthrough in testing this week. And so God, we exalt your name over their lives right now. And God, not only will you meet them at the test, but you will be with them during their test. And we bless your name for that today, God. Oh, God, we give you the glory in advance. Somebody needs traveling grace today, God. Protect them in airports. Protect family members, God, that are traveling up and down the highways now. God, we need you. Somebody's trying to make a major decision in their life, God. And they need to know that you are with them, God. present help in the time of trouble. Spirit of the living God, stay right here with us. Spirit of the living God, keep us in that game. Come on, there's worship. Somebody's believing God for a major breakthrough. Somebody's believing God like the preacher said for that miracle. And we know in this room, and we know those that have joined in this morning that God is a miracle worker. And so God, we're expecting. We're expecting a miracle. We're believing you for a miracle right now. Some of us are walking miracles. We're walking miracles and knowing that it was nobody but you, Lord. Lord, I, I need some worshipers that know that it was nobody but God that brought your family through. It was nobody but God that met you in surgery. It was nobody but God that met you in the courtroom. And so that you know that God is a miracle worker. It was nobody but God that brought you through turbulent times in your place of employment. I feel a healing in this room. Hallelujah. I feel an anointing in this place right now. I feel an anointing over the life of our mother and grandmother right now. I feel a victory resting over us. Open up your mouth and begin to bless this name right now. Come on, Spirit. God. Come on, there ought to be some men 
and say, I'm giving my life to the Lord. There's somebody through a phone call this morning that can say, you're dead and giving my life to the Lord. Although God is blessing this ministry, 2021 has been a blessed year. God says, I'm going to do exceedingly and abundantly. I'm going to do more than you could ever ask or think of me. Come on, worship him in this place. Come on, open up your mouths and begin to praise him. Begin to give him the praise that is rightfully due unto him. Come on, come on. Those are two souls that the enemy would have loved to have. But we bless his name.
uh, three points on godly leadership. Godly leadership. I want to teach on a Thursday evening at the, the latter part of May on godly leadership Amen. of leaders in ministry. So you'll be able to join into that class as well. And then in September, we'll start meeting back with all of our ministers as I prepare for a time of ordination of ministers going forth in the latter part of this year. So we're looking forward. We have an exciting year, a blessed year before us. And God has been extremely good to us, even in the midst of the pandemic. Amen. 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 No, I haven't forgotten. It's offering time. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 I will get sick. Amen. Let's prepare to worship in giving through the app. If you're giving through the app, you give through the app. If you're giving, amen, physically in the sanctuary or if you've called in or mailed in your gifts, let's prepare to worship in giving in the body of Christ this morning. Is prepared to thank God for the time to give, the place to give, and the opportunity to give. Amen. Amen. So if you're in the sanctuary, you may receive an envelope. If not, amen. You can give through the app. Please, it's vital and support. And we thank God for the support and giving through our app on a weekly and daily basis of the people of God giving. Amen. It's good to see our young people. Diana, it's good to have you in the house of God. Amen. You brought the Lord's, you drove the Lord's to church today. Amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. We thank God for each of you in this hour. Let's worship and giving. Amen. We give you amen. Let's stand now in our homes, stand in our places of employment, stand in the house of God in this hour. Let's go before the Lord in prayer with our hands in the receiving position. Eternal God, we come now. We thank you for this hour. We thank you for this time. And we thank you for this worship experience. We thank you for the life of David. We thank you for the preacher. We thank you for the testimony. We thank you for the souls that were saved and revived and rededicated their life unto you. I pray for their growth and ministry. We thank you for families and loved ones. Bless and keep us. Bless our Bible study on Tuesday. Bless our Sunday school this morning at 9.30. That we will tune in for Sunday school at 9.30. And our young people will tune in for Sunday school at 12 noon. Bless our teachers, God. Cover them and keep them in thy care. And we thank you and keep us blessed on Tuesday evening. And bring us here on Saturday morning at 10 a.m. for the Lord's Supper. Bring us in, God, in a spirit of joy for the first Sunday in May. Thank you for being so good to us. In Jesus' name, keep us healed, guide, protect, and walk with us. In Jesus' name, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with these people now and forever. Let the church say, Amen. Amen.